Sean. We're here at the X FQXI conference, uh, which is on the physics of the observer, the importance of observer. The observer has been in quantum physics for now getting close to a century, uh, and the original interpretation of the of Copenhagen and Niels Bohr was that the uh, kind of almost like an individual, a, a, a sentient person, has to be involved in, in quantum mechanics. How has the concept of, of the observer uh, developed over this time, and what are the issues today? Yeah, it's a great question because, of course, especially in quantum mechanics, whenever we start talking about what happens in this physical theory, we start talking about observers. But deep in the heart of almost every physicist is the conviction that that shouldn't really be important, right? That the existence of a person, uh -huh. which is what it sounds like when you yeah. say the word observer, that shouldn't be part of a real physical theory. So there's sort of a minority of physicists who've taken up the radical point of view that, no, 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 you can't even define quantum mechanics without really taking observers seriously as part of the fundamental ingredients of the theory. The rest of us are trying to say, well, what we really meant all along uh -huh. by observers is something else, some part of the system that interacts with some other part of the system in another way. So I, for one, am happy to count video cameras, rocks, uh, atoms and molecules in the air as quantum mechanical observers for all intents and purposes. Well, because certainly we, if we go back to the beginning of the universe 13.8 billion years ago, uh, what is your observer causing the quantum decoherence and uh, into classical uh, happening then? I mean, That's something, right. something when, has to happen at that point. Whenever you start talking to cosmologists who think about the universe as a whole, you're going to get a different set of perspectives than if you think of, if you talk to people who do experiments in a laboratory right. or you know back in the days of Copenhagen in the 1920s people were really thinking about atomic spectra right that's what they wanted <laughs> oh, to right, understand right. and jumps between different energy levels of course there was a pretty clear-cut distinction between the experimenter doing this work the observer and the thing that they were looking at but there was a time in the history of the universe there were no observers there are places in the universe that seem like they might be <laughs> very inhospitable to the existence of observers but as physicists we would still like to describe what happens in those situations well let's just go back and review why are observers important to begin with in quantum mechanics it's a weird thing because we teach quantum mechanics in a certain way i mean basically every college physics department that teaches quantum mechanics tells the students the same thing and almost no physicist really believes it and that's not this weird <laughs> embarrassing situation to be in and the thing we tell them is that there are quantum mechanical systems like a nucleus that might decay or an atom that might radiate and what quantum mechanics is able to tell you is when you as an observer make an observation of the system what is the probability that you see different experimental outcomes? Mm -hmm. And so the very formulation of the rules of quantum mechanics, as we teach in the textbooks, involves the existence of an observer. And to some extent, people like Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg in the Copenhagen School of Quantum Mechanics tried to sort of make excuses for that. They're like, yes, that's really what it means to do quantum mechanics. Okay, now some people will t will continue to take that very seriously today, and and they have to deal with what was in the early universe before there was any certainly any sentient creatures or or, or any even even planets, and some of them come up with pr some pretty wild ideas. I mean, some could say God because outside the system is the observer. I've seen that. Um, some you've seen people say that God is what counts as the observer in quantum mechanics. Yeah, really? Yeah, even yeah. I've never heard that. All right. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've seen um, that uh, some kind of uh, backward causation uh, uh, that which is sort of allowed within physics, uh, some kind of backward causation that consciousness today has been influencing in the the various uh, possible histories of the universe going back. Have you heard that one? Yeah, I've heard things like <laughs> okay, that. Okay, yes, okay, that good. one I have heard. Yeah, as incredible as those things sound, that that by smart people, that means that there's a real issue here. Absolutely. There, there is a real issue. A and I, I have trouble understanding the, the depth of the real issue. We have to come up with something so bizarre. Right. And the fact that the ideas are so bizarre shouldn't count as a strike against them, I don't think. Uh, I think that, uh, I mean, this is what bothered Einstein to some extent, right? He thought that there should be clear-cut, realistic right, 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 rules for right. how the universe works. Right. But Maybe there aren't. You know, we don't know. Like, as physicists, we don't get to decide ahead of time. We don't get to decide the causality always goes from the past to the future. We don't get to decide whether or not God exists. Mm -hmm. We don't get to decide whether or not objective reality exists. We try to understand the world the best we can. So there are, there's a whole large school of thought called epistemic 
approaches to quantum mechanics, mm. where they go straight out and, well, there's, there's subdivisions in between. Some of them deny the existence of objective reality. All of them deny that quantum mechanics is talking about objective reality. They say that what quantum mechanics is doing is merely giving us a black box that tells us observational outcomes, tells us what those probabilities it's are going to be. Radical empiricists. Yeah, and, and, and so they're anti-realists, right? Yeah, so you say, well, what right. is it a probability of? Well, it's a measurement outcome, an observational right. result. That's well, as so far as you can go. What is happening? Yeah, that's right. And on the way other side are people like me who take the wave function of quantum mechanics and just say, that's it. That's the world. That is reality. And you and I, who grow up in a classical world, you know, with classical intuitions, have trouble accepting that. If you do accept it, it has its own bizarre quantum uh, imp implications, like the many worlds of quantum mechanics. Do you go there? I do. I totally go there. Happily, yes. That's right. <laughs> uh, but it fits. I think it fits the data. It, it, plenty of unanswered questions. We don't know the answers to yet, so it's not a closed research program yet. But uh, one way or the other, the implications are going to be bizarre. I, I, and uh, you know, one would say that uh, the many worlds theory of, of quantum mechanics, if you think that is more than metaphor, that's as bizarre as you think people who believe in God. Uh, it's bizarre. I don't <laughs> want to say how bizarre it is. I think that it's the are, interesting are, aren't thing. Aren't there relative categories of bizarreness? There are. There absolutely are. That's very important. In fact, the thing that the most single biggest misunderstanding about many worlds is that when you write down what the theory is, when someone says, what do you mean many worlds? What, what is that theory you have in mind? That somehow there's a line in the instructions that say, and there are many worlds, okay? There's no such line okay. in the instruction manual for many worlds. The instruction manual is there are quantum states and they evolve with time according to the Schrodinger equation. And that's it. And it comes out of the evolution of quantum states that worlds naturally appear. If you believe in quantum mechanics at all, you believe that something like an electron can be in a superposition of spinning clockwise and spinning yeah. counterclockwise. If you believe in the laws of nature according to the Schrodinger equation of quantum mechanics, you believe that that can lead to a superposition of a human being having seen the electron go clockwise yeah. and a human being <laughs> having seen the electron go counterclockwise. So you can have a superposition of worlds just as easily.